God bless and welcome to my channel where I'll be sharing many powerful testimonies of ex-witches, ex-Satanists, as well as heaven and hell testimonies. And today I have one of the most powerful hell testimonies I have ever heard in my life. And this sister also has an incredible heaven testimony that you have to hear. I had to listen to it several times because it was so powerful and detailed. If you enjoy her testimony, please give it a like to help us preach the gospel all over the world and win more souls for our Savior, Jesus Christ. And having said that, Sister Camille, please share with us your testimony. Hello. Thank you for having me. And uh, I'm always excited to share my testimony. So um, this happened 11 years ago in 2013. So um, I guess I'll just get started, huh? <laughs> so um, it was around October of 2012. And I was diagnosed with fourth stage heart failure and they weren't sure why. And I found out later why, but uh, they said I had a year to live without a heart transplant. Um, fortunately, 10 years, almost uh, exactly earlier, I had been saved. So, um, well, July of 2003, so about nine years earlier. So um, I was also, I also knew the Lord, obviously, but I had needed to get this is a wake up call, no matter who you are or what you know about the Lord. You just know that um, you might be dying soon. And they gave me a year to live without my without a heart transplant. And so I went home and the Lord specifically said to me these words, pray like you never have before because you don't want someone else's heart. So I um, just started praying all the time. I started looking into um, or just listening to other uh, worship songs and uh listening to praise music constantly, also getting into the word of God. I knew, um, I actually looked up on Google healing scriptures. And so what was funny about that is that um, when I printed them out, the only color that would work on our printer was crimson red. <laughs> so I always thought that was kind of funny because of the blood of Jesus covering me. Um, but I looked up scriptures and I remember walking around the house and, and saying those scriptures over and over. And uh, and then unbeknownst to me, in March of 2013, I would get violently ill. Um, I had what felt like the flu. So my body just hurt really bad. And I just thought, oh, it'll pass in a few days. Well, on the third day, it was so severe that I could barely move. And I remember urinating and it was straight. And so I looked up at my, my ex now um, I looked him up, looked up at him, and said, "Call 911 for the first time ever." So he calls 911, and uh, immediately, right after I saw that blood in my urine, I started going into strokes. And so, right after my strokes, I just remember being um, descending down to hell. So I, and I, I say that because you know, you know automatically where you're going when you're outside of your body. So I remember just a sharp descent, and but I would be thrown in and out of realms. So I'm saying that meaning um, there were three different type, earth type realms that I experienced, but they were so much darker. Like everybody was demonic in them for the most part, except for if they were happened to be there as well. Um, I think that part of the, some of these people were actually... Uh, in hell, I think that um, I had ended up being around. So I'll explain that. But the first realm, I had been um, sold. I was being sold and uh, tormented. Um, so uh, the most horrific thing you could ever imagine, because you are um, you can see everything in a three hundred and sixty degree view. So you're tormented by that. You're tormented because the pain is so much worse outside of your body. Um, and your knowledge is so much more like um, it was just really strange. Like you could you could sense their evil. The um, These would be men slash demons. So they would change back and forth um, as they were assaulting me. And I don't know. I don't know why that is. I've I've often tried to think of how the, how that uh, worked or why they would change back and forth, but all I know is what happened. So that's what I'm here to tell you. So um, it, they went back and forth. Then all of a sudden, when I really couldn't be 
where I felt like I couldn't be tormented anymore, I'd be thrown out of that realm. So this happened three times. The first time I was thrown out, I remember just falling. And oftentimes when you think of falling, your arms would be like this, right? Well, I had six demons on each side and they were tearing at my skin, literally shredding it off of my bones. So it was, and I could see my skin hanging. I could see the color of the tenants and the, um, I could just, I'll just never forget it. It was um, just horrible, horrible looking. And as they would be pulling on me, there was this voice to the corner right. And he kept whispering, just get her down here. She'll never know she doesn't belong. Then I'd be thrown into the second realm. The second realm, I was also tormented, but with, um, Every time I was tormented, it was all unspoken things on earth. So like uh, torment, like things that I feared on earth happening, but I would never even, I never even said them to a single soul because you, they're gross or they're just crazy. Um, so you don't say these things to people. So I thought that was extremely interesting how they like know your deepest uh, fears um, and I've heard this from many people that have been to hell, um, that they they know how to torment you exactly specific to you. Just as when I went to heaven, as I'll explain later, um, they the Lord knew how to bless me specific according to me. So um, it's the total opposite. So I was um, in the second realm and, and it was like a, um, a place that, I had my, my now ex, he was like, but they would turn back and forth. Like I said, like it would look like him, but then it would be demons, um, him and his friends. And they were like trying to blow me up and I was pregnant. And, and then, um, he was with another woman. It was just very strange things, but devastating nonetheless. And so I remember him trying to blow me up in this, uh, place. It looked like it was in Asia or something because uh, the women that gathered around me, um, they looked like they were of Asian descent too. Um, in two of the three realms, they look like that. So uh, they were trying to help me and, but he kept throwing grenades at me and just all this crazy stuff was going on. And I was so fearful. And then as soon as um, we would escape though, um, the, in the second and third realm, this happened. But as soon as we escaped, um, we, I would be thrown out into the blacker than black, which I found later in through the scripture is outer darkness. So the second time I get thrown out all of a sudden, okay, then I'm falling again. Satan's whispering in the right. And you just know instinctively, I knew he, it was Satan <clears throat> and these demons. I know instinctively also that whoever got me there first was going to receive a reward. And so that's why I think they were tearing at me so much to try to get me there. And then Satan's still saying the same thing and me trying the whole time to not even look in that direction because it was so just creepy and evil, even more so than creepy. Just the you felt that presence. And it's um, also it explains in, I believe, Isaiah um, and a couple other books in the Bible of that darkness that can be felt in Exodus as well. Um, so the whole thing feels evil. So you know where you're going, right? So then all of a sudden I was thrown into the third realm and that was by far the most horrific. That one I was, I was tormented. I was in it. I was locked in a house with two other girls and um, repeatedly assaulted. Um, when I say repeatedly, I mean like by many, many different men slash demons, many. Um, and I could even, I don't know what was worse sometimes is knowing their screams, hearing the other girls scream or my own screams. Um, it was just absolutely horrific. And I remember the last time that they assaulted me, it was so bad that I remember my having burn marks to my bone. Um, and I remember just looking at my hands, but I could, I realized I could slip through the knot. So, and it was huge, thick, like probably that big of rope. Like I'd never seen, I've never seen anything like it before or since. Um, and I finally, I was able to slip out. 
I remember all of them left at the same time. And I think this is part of the torment, to be honest. They all left at the same time. And so I thought, oh, I can get out of here. So I slipped my hand through. I, um, I, I actually was just letting my hand rest in there um, because I got it and realized I could get it through sooner. But they were all around or some of them were always around. But then there was a time they all left. And so I slipped my arm through. And I remember leaving, starting to leave the bedroom. And I remembered the girl next to me screaming because um, I could hear it all the time. And uh, when they weren't tormenting me, they were on her. So I remember um, thinking, I can't leave her here. And so I went in there first thing, let her go. She ran. Then um, the, the other one, then I start leaving and I see this girl chained with these huge, huge chains. Like the links were like that big. And I'd never seen a chain like that. Well, she was chained to the radiator. And I remember just falling down crying because I, I knew they were going to be back soon. And I um, was just, I couldn't leave her though. My, my conscience wouldn't let me leave her. And so I just fell down to the ground on my knees and started sobbing. And started ruffling around. There was a lot of uh, trash on the floor and mail and just different stuff. And I remember shrifling through it or whatever. And then I found a key. And then so I let her out, grabbed her. I had to pick her up uh, by the hand because she was so weak at that point. And we walked outside. I squeezed her hand. She looked at me with a smile I'll never forget. As to say thank you, but she was extremely weak. And I said, we have to run two different directions. And we knew um, that there was a store by us. So I said, you go this way, I'll go that way. I went straight and then I fell back into the outer darkness. Like it was, I don't know. I, I have thought this was so insane for years, right? Um, but then as I study, because a lot of times when you have a near-death experience like mine, like a horrific, you know, just crazy one, you'll look for comfort with other people that have had near-death because you'll notice that most of the time, you, like 99% of the time, you have something in common, right, that kind of helps you. And so the only thing I can think of with all that stuff going on was that, um, was that I was like in a hologram type world. Um, a lot of people experience the same thing where Satan knows their biggest fears. And so they're literally living in their fears. So I started um, go, I went right back out to outer darkness, start falling again. The demons are ripping at me again. And all of a sudden on the right, Satan's there still, but he's closer. And he just is whispering the same thing over and over. And I remember that time, though, is when I saw him and he had he looked like this horrible looking lamb type body. Um, and he had like this white, slimy, clear, uh, really super old wool in his fur. But it was black, black, black fur. And it had um, like it was all throughout it, all this dirt. And all I thought was how disgusting and old it looked. And then his head was this sharp. I just say sharp because it was so big and so pointed wolf face with his nose. And then he had these eyes that were like red beams. Um, this whole time on earth, I'm in the meantime going into a coma. Um, and I end up uh, losing my leg around this time. Um, so I'm in a coma for about a week or two. We're trying to figure out exactly. I find out next month, actually, because I'm writing a book as well. And I find out next month about um, how long exactly I was in the coma. But the hell part felt like forever. <laughs> so um, I know it wasn't more than a couple weeks, though. So I'm falling. I'm falling. And then the most amazing thing ever happens. And God, the Father, steps above us. And I remember just getting torn up. And saying, I guess I'm going to hell now. And I had, that is the crazy thing people need to understand is outside of our bodies, <clears throat> excuse me, outside of our bodies, we know that there is a heaven and a hell. You know what eternity is. And you know you deserve hell. <laughs> like there's never 
there was no question about it what I deserved I wasn't fighting I wasn't saying I was saved on earth I hadn't even crossed my mind that part actually and I know it was only because no one else will experience what I experienced going through hell um, or going to hell really um, because I like to preface everything you know and to tell you that because I was saved on I am saved I was saved then but the Lord knew I was going to come back and tell all these people because now I've told, you know, I did a TV interview recently that will go out to 300 million people. Um, so this is why I experienced what I did. Do not be afraid at all. If you know Jesus and you're covered by his blood, you have nothing to fear. But I just, I knew I deserved where I was going, like I said, and and I said that, and as soon as I said, I guess I'm going to hell now, this being comes above us, and real strong being, you just felt his presence instantly. And he stood up, and he put his arms like this, <laughs> and he put his feet out over us, you know, like his strong stance, and looked down and said, I don't think so. And as soon as he whispered a syllable, I went up, we were all looking as soon as we heard his voice, we all looked down. And then immediately, he just, they're all gone. All the demons, Satan. I remember thinking Satan would surely be there because I knew his power. He was leading these demons around, telling them what to do. So I knew that he had a lot of power. So I thought, where's this guy? You know, so I look, we all look up and then I immediately go like this to look at the demons and they're all gone just from a syllable of his voice. The father, wow, just his power is just amazing. And then he takes with his right hand, he comes and he reaches and grabs me up and he takes me. And I remember specifically going up into my body and then I was at the hospital. And as soon as he, I got back up into my body, I heard this beeping and just this noise. And I was like, where am I? What's going on? Where am I? And then I heard, I just remembered going to the hospital. I was like, oh yeah, I'm in the, I'm at the hospital. Um, and then Right as I said that, I'm looking up at the tiles at the at the in the hospital room at OHSU um, in Oregon Science and Health University. I go, I look up at the tiles. They all turned to these beautiful clouds, just the most beautiful clouds. And then right as I see that, I see this giant right hand again <laughs> come in, and he takes me out of my body, and I look the same. I was just clear. I wasn't perfected yet, so I was just like a transparent. And I'll never forget my hair on his nail. His his hand was so big that my hair was long, probably about to maybe about here, a little shorter than now. And I remember it going just a tiny bit down his nail. <laughs> and then that's when I was talking about, too, you get eternity as well. You get, I just remember thinking, the first thing I thought was I had all this power over myself on earth. But wherever this being wants me to go, I'm going because I hadn't yet seen his face. And I believe that's because I wasn't yet in heaven. So the father takes me. He goes like this and he goes and just shoots me upwards and I'm flying. And automatically my hands just cross my chest like this, like doing a folding. And I had one angel on each side, about 75 feet tall. I can only assume, I've heard that number, I believe from the Lord, so um, that's why I've always kind of stuck with that number. And then I also could never see their faces, so they were immensely tall. Um, and then they would ju they just shot me up. And I remember going so fast, and I thought, I thought, I need to tell people how fast I'm going. And it's funny because I, it never even comp occurred to me that I need to tell them how fast I'm going because I was coming back. I just thought, I need to tell people how fast I'm going. And I remember, for some strange reason, I thought of the tubes at the bank, at the, <laughs> how they're swift and destination-oriented. Because I knew these angels were not taking me on a sightseeing tour. I was going somewhere. So I just went, Shoo! and then all of a sudden, they dropped me underneath the city. I, I knew it was a place. Um, and it was, it shone. It just, like, it was just incredible how it shone. And I, I remember looking around still for them, trying to see if they were there because I wanted to see these guys because they were so fast and so amazingly powerful. And um, so I wanted to see them and they were gone. They completely disappeared. 
And as I came up in the elevator, it, well, it reminded me of an elevator only because I just went upwards. Um, it didn't have a, a vessel or anything like that. It was just, I just went upward. And I knew automatically from top of my head to the bottom of my feet that I was being completely transformed. And I remember standing on the ground there. And I was like, I was like, where am I? What's going on? And I'm looking around. And that was the first time I heard the father's voice. And he said, you no longer have to fear. <laughs> How amazing is that? And then the second thing he said to me, I still hadn't seen the father at this point yet. The second thing, though, he said to me, everything's telepathic and um, perfectly said, you know, well said. <laughs> and the second thing was, was you have a form and it is perfect. And I remember thinking, woohoo! And I was literally doing that. <laughs> because I'm kind of that kind of personality. And you never change your personality, no matter what. Um, God just perfects us, like our character and, and different things. But but I was still my goofy, you know, like to joke around. I'm very active. Um, and so I just automatically, because I've had um, heart disease all my life as a, as a six weeks old you know i was i was had open heart surgery so um so i automatically start running and i said i can run i can run and then i all of a sudden go up over the floor and i go choo, 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 four times around heaven around heaven's gates so um i always like to tell people too that this is um simultaneous time so uh things i always have the same things to say but sometimes they might be in a little different order just because it's hard to explain something that seemed to happen all at the same time. So, um, so I went running around the gates and I remember just going, woohoo, and just feeling so amazing. And then I shot back to like memory wise to a time on earth that I could have ever felt any, any different, you know, like, or excuse me, anything comparable um, to how I felt the complete the only word I've ever used to describe it that came close but still sounds dirty is the word ecstasy. Ecstasy even because of the world, how we've abused and used words. It doesn't. It never will compare to God, the Father and, and Jesus, his Son, and the Holy Spirit being in their presence. And uh, I just remember feeling all this, all of a sudden just came rushing over me. After he told me I had a form and it is perfect. And it was the peace and the love and the joy. And you know what I'm talking about with today's day energy, you know, because <laughs> we get so tired these days and, and life is just so exhausting. Well, when you feel that energy that you will feel with the, in heaven, it's worth everything. It's worth giving up anything and everything on this earth for. Amen. Yeah, and just to know it's eternal. <laughs> it's not energy that can be taken away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so I, um, as soon as I did that, I remember looking to my right, and I saw this huge lion. And this lion, I still have never, if anybody watching could figure this out with me, <laughs> because I've looked at scripture over and over, but this lion that God the Father was petting, um, had this white fur, just the most magnificent lion, 30 feet tall is what God told me. And he was like a house, like a built like a house. He was just huge. And he had a uh, white fur with the tips. I've said this since I could talk again. The tips appeared to be drenched in blood because they had a, cr I just knew they were blood. It was blood. And then the, um, his eyes were fire. And I remember thinking I could go into those eyes forever and be totally satisfied. I don't know why I thought that at that moment, um, but something to the effect of satisfied, totally happy. And then I said, but who is this sitting next to him? And it was God, the father and Jesus was right next to him on the right. And, uh, <laughs> and I just remember seeing God, the father. And what's so funny about that? is people often ask me what he looked like. And uh, I remember as soon as I came back, I'll give a more detailed description of Jesus. As soon as I came back, I remember thinking he looked like Jesus looked like him, like how we look like our fathers on earth. Um, I remember thinking that. But other than that, God has completely, for the most part, wiped my memory 
of his face. Um, and I, I do believe that matches with scripture um, of, of no man shall see my face and live. So I just kind of always, you know, it's all him, you know, doing everything. So <laughs> I just give him, you know, whatever he's got to do or whatever. Um, but he, um, I remember seeing him there and then Jesus was right by him and, and they would laugh all the time. And I just remember sitting there throughout the day on the throne, or on the throne steps is where I hung out. I always hung out outside the gates. So, um, I know that he had a great white throne. That was actually before I ever knew that scripture. I said that when I came back. I remember those were my first words when I could speak again. I said, was he sits at a, I remember grabbing my ex's hand and, um, and squeezing it and just trying to talk and saying he sits at a great white throne. And because uh, he was on this incredible throne that had it looked like it was made of pearl and ivory and other materials that um, aren't here. Um, th that's all I know, because I remember those the ones I knew came to me like my mind. But the other ones, I just knew it was so much more complicated, um, but it had a pearl esque kind of uh, look to it. And uh, and it had the the back of the chair you know how the the sides go up just the two rope parts you know like they're like roped intertwined he had like two fork kind of things coming up and he you know just sat there but um uh i just remember this throne was incredible and 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 jesus says i don't remember his throne but i always remembered his laugh and i remembered how he would anytime god would because they would joke around a lot and a lot of people have given me a lot of slack for that but i don't make it i don't make heaven so <laughs> you know i just know that god sat there and joked around a lot and him or god the father and uh him and jesus would joke around a lot and every time jesus would laugh at god and i assume he's making jokes or something i don't know i don't know what they were saying but he would tilt his head back and I could see his perfect teeth, Jesus's. And I remember coming back saying he had spiky hair because I couldn't believe that he had a modern type hair. And then a couple years later, I was at a girlfriend's house and she was a Christian and she had this painting up and it was by an artist named, her name is Achaian Kramerik. And she has a photo called the Prince of Peace. And I remember shaking and crying and saying, that's him. That's him. I just couldn't believe I got to see him again like that. It was just so amazing. And then, um, but him and the father would joke around all the time. And I remember uh, the most important part has always been to me to tell people is when I was sitting on the throne room steps and I'm looking around and it was to my right and I'm looking around and I'm saying, or I just was to myself saying, how could this be? How can it be that I'm here? And I said, I had sin because death comes upon you so fast. You know, you need to make sure you're right well before you die because it will come, it will come so fast that you may not have time. And chances are you will not have time. So I was so thankful that I had got right. But I remember looking around saying, how could it be? I said, there was sin I, I had on earth that I had not yet repented for. Um, and, and God said, the Father said, um, just as easy as I'm talking right now, literally same tone and everything said, it's because of the blood. And I said, I said, but I had addiction still. I had things on earth I had not yet overcome. And he points his big finger because it's huge. <laughs> he points his big finger down to me on the throne and he puts it in my face and he says, and make no mistake, Camille, I know everyone's heart. So I had um, come to find out the house we were living in was poisonous. And uh, I had, um, like I said, I always had heart problems. So... I kept getting these skin infections. Um, we had toxic mold in there. And if you're worried about your mold, chances are it's not it. But if you need to, Fred Meyer sells kits <laughs> and you can get your, your black mold tested. And I advise it because this could this should have killed me, honestly. Um, but I had been living in this house that was literally poisoning me and my family to death. And I would get these blisters on my arms 
and I would just itch them, and they hurt so bad. Well, uh, come to find out, I got gave myself an infection that way, and it went septic, and I had a pacemaker, and it got on there, and it went directly into my heart, and uh, uh, well, the the pain was insane, um, and my heart was literally that's why it was literally blowing up because it caused caused endocarditis, and. I had such pain that I was on some really strong pain medicine. And uh, I, uh, I just remember thinking when I knew I was going to be dying, because they said a year, right, at the most, so is what they said. So I remember thinking at that moment, um, or in those moments, saying, crying to God, listening to praise music, like I said, crying to God, saying, please forgive me, please forgive me, I want to get off this. But I... But I couldn't, you know, I would get so sick and it just, uh, I wouldn't have any quality of life. So I had to keep taking them. And I just remember thinking, because everybody on earth, you know, that I knew said that if you had any addictions or all these different things, you know, that you would go to hell. And uh, so, so I said that to God and when he told me it was, Make no mistake, I know everyone's heart. I knew that I had a vision then of all the times I cried. And how he says that he keeps all our tears, you know. And uh, I'm just so thankful that he's, he's him. And I will spend my entire life <laughs> telling everyone the truth. And it has ruined relationships for me. It's ruined uh, people thinking me I'm crazy. <laughs> um, but whatever it takes, because people need to understand our God is not a God sitting up there going, she didn't do this today, or she did this today, and I'm mad, or uh, keeping score. Our God is not like that. Our Father, our Holy Spirit, they're all God, you know, um, and Jesus. And uh, they laughed. <laughs> They were up there. Well, we think that we have all this guilt, and I'm I'm not talking about not having any accountability. I'm a big believer, you know, like First Corinthians six nine through ten. That's the deal right there. Is adulterers, fornicators, um, effeminate, um, all kind, you know, drunkards. They will not inherit the kingdom of God. That is a fact. Murderers, um, but outside of that. He knows our heart, right? So even with that, he knows our heart, but we need to also repent for things and change and that because that's what repentance means, right? It means change. So um, this is no by no means, excuse me, a ticket to go do whatever you want. It's just that he knows our hearts. He knows what we are trying to do. He knows what we are uh, our love for him. <laughs> we can't fake that. You know, when I was not saved, I remember saying, oh, I'll know when I die. And I'll just, on the on my deathbed, I'm just going to say, forgive me, Jesus, because I'll mean it. Because <laughs> I'm dying. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I just thought that was like a ticket for me. And thank God I didn't do that because when he came, it was so fast. And he says that too. In Luke, he says that when it comes upon you, it will be quick. And you won't have time. And I think especially these days, because I think things are about ready to go down. I think that a lot of things, I think we are, well, he has told me we are literally at the end of humanity. And so these are the days that we cannot fool around. And we, he knows our hearts. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Do, would you like me to share some other cool stuff I saw? <laughs> yeah. I would love to hear any of that stuff you saw. Um, I got yeah. Okay. Great. Um, okay. So I got he he blessed me so much. It's it's absolutely mind blowing to me. But all got all glory come to God. Go to God because um, if I got what I deserved, I'd be dead in hell. So I just want to preface with that. <laughs> so um, so but the most amazing thing. So I lost a baby. Um, this is probably the most amazing thing to me one of them well they're all i just got to be honest they're all amazing so i say that about everything but uh, so i remember going there when i was there god gave me kind of a drone 
video or like a drone footage, uh, like a view of the area, right? So I never went into actual heavens, through the heaven's gates. Um, I saw the gate and it was huge. And God told me that was as well, 75 feet tall, but he said it was thick, solid gold. And um, I remember inside the gate, there were these two little or two little angels and they were hanging up bows for me. So they were preparing, or I believe, because God knows all things, the Father knows all things. So I think it was just so I came back and told you guys what they were, how they were preparing, because I know I was not destined to go in there, obviously. But there were these uh, two little angels, and they could fly. They had cute little wings, and they were just adorable. And they, um, each one had a side of a bow for me. And they were these huge, beautiful bows that had every single color that I ever loved all mixed in, but you could still differentiate it. But the colors were just incredible there. And, and they were hanging up these bows. And then I had two ladies. One, one of them was really loud and boisterous and she's going, Camille's here, Camille's here. And the other lady had a clipboard and uh, she was writing down things for the little angels to do, like little to do's to get ready for the party. Um, and what was funny is I came back and I remember these women were ingrained in me, you know, their, their appearances, their characteristics. And so I was telling my ex and unfortunately that marriage dissolved because of, he became a, a bad addict and a very, but, uh, yeah. So, um, but I was telling him, I said, I described these women, but everyone there after Christ's age, they all returned to that age. So when you die past that age, you'll return to Christ's age. So 33 in the area there. So everybody looked to be that age, but perfect, right? They had the same hair um, usually. So, but better, obviously, like if you're bald or something, <laughs> you know, nobody was bald in heaven. So, but uh, she was like, um, she had this pinned up hair a certain way and she had this beautiful red hair and i just remember describing her being an organizer and uh these different things and then trevor my ex said said that's my grandmother pansy and i remember years later we were looking through stuff we went through his storage unit and we were looking through pictures and I, cause I was like, oh cool, pictures I'd never seen before of his family and stuff. And I came upon her picture in her thirties and I had no idea who that was. And I just knew I'd seen her in heaven. And I go, this is her, this is her. And he goes, that's my grandmother Pansy. <laughs> and I just thought that was so funny. And so she was there in the gates. Um, and then this other boisterous woman turned out to be his other grandmother who I described perfectly. And she was um, screaming, Camille's here, Camille's here. Well, while she's saying this, hundreds of people are gathering to outside the, or inside the gates to come greet me. And I remember thinking, no way could I have affected that many people on earth. And, uh, and then at the very back of the line, uh, there was this little boy crawling. And I think for all intents and purposes, he was crawling because he would have been about I think he was about two and a half. Um, so I don't believe he crawled in heaven, but I, you know, day to day, but I think it was to differentiate him from the crowd, but he was crawling. And I said, God, who's that? And he goes, he goes, that's, or I said, I didn't say God. I just said, who's that? And he goes, that's your son. And I just, I just remembered <laughs> he had these big curls and yeah, May of 2010, I had lost a baby and uh, at four and a half months. And um, to be honest with you, I, this earth tells you to forget about it. It's kind of like a thing with miscarriages because they become so common, right? So they just act like it didn't really happen or his family was actually phenomenal with it. Um, I, I still to this day appreciate all the love and care they showed me after that. But, um, but I just remembered seeing him and even, even a couple months ago, I saw a picture of me when I was three years old and I had the same hair, <laughs> these big brown curls. And, um, but he, there was my son there. And then I saw all these kids, but there were millions of babies, so many babies from miscarriage, abortions, stillborns. Um, way more than any other kind of people. 
But the neat thing too was there were way more animals than any kind of people. And I came back from heaven. I don't know why I never really thought of our pets as um, eternal. I just thought they were here for kind of our pleasure, you know, and then that would be that. I don't know why I should have thought of them more, but after that, I tell you, I do. <laughs> I saw so many animals there. I knew our pets. I knew instinctively that whatever pets we love on earth are with us there. And, um, and the animals were so neat, like the little boys. Um, and I, I think girls could probably do this too, but this is just what I saw. But I saw all these little boys who had, um, little animals growing up with them so like tigers and lions and bears and different kinds of animals and my son had this black tiger and i actually came back thinking there's no way i mean black tigers never even existed you know i'd never seen a black tiger and uh but i looked it up and they sure did but they're you know mostly extinct now but he had a tiger that he was growing up with and they would play around with them and um, they would just do somersaults with them and, you know, over them. And it was just so neat. And they had these big trees and these trees had fruit, but they didn't have any skin. And there was no mess there, like at all. And so they would just, um, uh, and I remember just that eating wasn't like here. Like it was, um, I don't, I'm, I know it was pleasurable too. So I don't want to say it wasn't pleasurable. You know, everything is obviously, but I mean, it wasn't constant like here. So um, most of the time, the only, I saw a lot of children around the trees, um, not the adults so much, but children around the trees eating off the trees. And then um, there was uh, mansions there. And I remember one angel, same size, 75 feet, he was actually going from one side of the mansion to the other, nailing uh, golden with gold, big, huge gold nails, the roof on. And that was in 2013. Um, so I can only imagine now how they look. <laughs> but I saw the mansions. I saw, um, I also, when God the Father told me I would have to go back, I remember being completely devastated. Um, and he just said, are you having fun yet? And I was like, yeah, woohoo. And for some reason, I never spoke with Jesus um, or the Holy Spirit. I, I always kind of believe that the lion might have represented the Holy Spirit, but I don't know that for a fact. And, and I still to this day don't know, but I do believe, you know, in the Trinity. But, um, but the Father is the one I spoke with. And I think a lot of that is because of him wanting us to understand his love, his, you know, because a lot of people come back with Jesus and that is just as miraculous and amazing. Um, I just only can only say that I got that I received that different uh, point of view um, for that reason, for everybody to see him, to know how much of a loving father he is. He's not like directing things, you know, and and mad at people. And he wants everyone to come to him. He just, he loves us so much that he's, he came as a human. He came as Jesus to die. So I just think that he wants us to understand the lighter side, you know, like uh, as far as that he was joking a lot, you know, like I never thought I could see of God laughing, sitting there laughing in heaven, you know, um, I just had never thought of that before I went. And, and then another thing was, um, when I was sitting, sitting at the throne, I remember one of the first things I saw was a scroll of my life. And, and it showed me how I was assaulted. I've been assaulted on earth too, um, a couple of times. Um, I've had some horrible things happen and some amazing things too. But I've also taken advantage of a lot of people in my life. You know, when I was younger and hurt people. And, uh, and I just remember seeing how because I trusted in the Lord ultimately. And he forgave me. Most importantly, because of Jesus' blood. That all those things work together for the good. And I just remember thinking... I was happy about all of it. Like I was, I was, it, not that I was a proud, happy, uh, but you realized you got it. That's all I can say is you got it. You got why these things happened. You understood that they made you better. 
And then he also did something really interesting where I just thought he said, I felt all that joy. It was always rushing over you. And I thought back to if I ever felt that on earth and I stopped myself, like I was saying, I stopped myself because I knew I didn't. Well, at that very moment, God, the father says, now imagine the complete opposite. And as soon he let me for like just brief seconds go into the complete opposite, which is a person in hell. And that hopelessness, the despair was worse than my torture. Way worse. I remember thinking the hopelessness alone of you not knowing Jesus Christ as your personal savior when you die is worse than any torment. It was a, a despair that you cannot know. I mean, I cannot in my own body, my fleshly body now cannot ever, ever describe accurately. Um, and then he brought me out of it, but he wanted me to know, to tell you, um, because unfortunately I didn't go all the way into the depths of hell. So, um, but when he asked me when I was running around and I felt all that joy and stuff, he said, he said now, um, or he said, are you having fun yet? And I said, yeah, this is amazing. And he's like, cause now you got to go back. And I, or now you have to go back is what he said. And I, I remember seeing this crystal heart come before me and it just fell on the ground and shattered into like a million pieces, but then there was no mess. So it shattered and then that was, it was gone. And then, um, I just was sitting there going, I just can't, I couldn't imagine why I had to come back. And, um, but the best thing ever was when he got up from his throne and God, the father since has told me that that is how Jesus for one of us, just like how God, the father to comfort me, the father got up from his throne for just one me who had had much sin in my life, who had made many, many mistakes, um, who had been hurt and ashamed. And when he came toward me, I just remember saying, no way the maker of everything cares if I'm hurting, if I'm hurt is what I said. And, and he came up and he grabbed my hand, my right hand. And, um, and I always thought this was neat because in Psalm 73, it says he takes me by my right hand and with my heart failure. It talks about my heart fails and he takes me with his right hand. So even that was scripture. I have so much scripture on this. It's just amazing to me. That's why I want to write it too in a book. But he took me by the right hand and we took three steps. And I remember we were all sitting outside of heaven. And we were all of a sudden above earth. And it was this beautiful round, but it was so up close. I actually am meeting with my illustrator to my book um, this weekend on and, and, and the coast in Bandon. And I am so excited to get that painted, that the earth, because it just looked incredible. And for some reason, I still don't know why. And if anybody has any opinions, please leave it. Um, but, the, but America the United States rather and um, South Africa were outlined in pure gold. And I never quite understood that, but um, we took the few steps and I remember seeing God, uh, his foot <laughs> as I'm walking. And before that though, I thought I have to watch my thoughts. I'm walking with God almighty. I have to watch what my, and then he gently interrupts me all telepathic all the time. And he, often did by the second or third word which matched scripture and psalms and he said you no longer have those thoughts and i was like i don't and you don't realize on earth how we're bombarded with thoughts and so i remember just going oh my goodness i don't this is amazing so we took a few steps i saw his huge foot and i remember he had these two gold thick gold rope chains over his foot and uh, the bottom, I remember thinking, looked like uh, clouds. And, and uh, he joked with me and said, clouds and Tempur-Pedic. <laughs> and I just always thought that was so funny because I can't imagine that it was really, I don't know. But he can't lie. So I don't know. I just thought it was so crazy. So, he, But then he chuckled and I was just like, okay. So we just kept walking and then we're um, looking over. Uh, earth and I remember saying how many universes are there because I've always wanted to know um, I've always just was so curious of that 
And then he said, he well, he took his hands and he went like this and he outstretched like an accordion. And it had all these beautiful, magnificent colors shining from it. And he said, the top of each folder is how many universes? Well, he we didn't count them then. And I remember thinking that was so funny because um, I don't know why he didn't just answer, but it's him, you know, whatever. So I, <laughs> I figured he knew best. So I wrote it down. Uh, so I had an order at which I learned things after I woke up from my coma. So I was told I was going to be a vegetable. I was told I would never walk again, talk again, um, or any of these things. And I'm convinced, I know 100% that if I would not have went up to heaven, that would have been my my destiny basically on earth. Um, but I know that I was healed because that, that elevator thing, you know, I knew that I was being healed. And I had lost my leg around that time. Um, I still to this day do not understand my leg, my left leg and my right toes, um, like halfway down on my right toes. So I don't even limp or anything. It's really cool. <laughs> but um, all those, those were allowed to be taken. Um, I don't know why, but as far as my heart goes, <laughs> this was nuts that um, they took out um, my pacemaker. They had to take it out and they would they would so I was externally paced is what they call it to a machine at the hospital and I remember them saying we have to get her pacemaker back in her we uh, you know I had had it since I was 17 I believe yeah I spent my 18th birthday with it um and they uh they kept saying that and so I would like I was still just I slept for basically the first year and I would wake up because I was in the hospital three months with rehab and everything and I would wake up just long enough to say I won't need it I went to heaven and they would laugh and um, sure enough I didn't need it I did need it I ended up needing it about two years later um, but they even remarked because I was supposed to come back for a, a quadruple bypass or some type of really intricate open heart surgery within a year because I wasn't strong enough to survive it at that point. But I would always laugh and tell them I won't need it. I went to heaven. And so the anniversary, I went home July 21st. I prayed to go home by summer and God literally, the father literally sent me home uh, July 20 or June 21st. And um, I went home and that following, I had to wait a year and I would ke I kept having my checkups and things, and I would just laugh and say I won't need it. I went to heaven. So they said, okay, well, well, we're gonna do it August of 2014. You'll come back and uh, we'll we'll schedule your surgery. And I went back, and the same doctor that I'm meeting with next month, um, or a cardiac, uh, she's actually the head nurse of cardiology at OHSU or OSHU, uh, Patty Woods. She. Um, is going to be doing all my records and everything we're going to be talking next month but um she said camille will you tell me what you said all this time what you've been saying and i said that i won't need it i went to heaven and she started crying and she still cries when she sees me actually she cried last month <laughs> and she said um she said camille your heart is healthier than before you almost died and um so all kinds of things like that. So my pacemaker, I didn't, it actually was at 74 beats a minute, which was what it was set to. And I didn't need it for two years. Um, and then I have been um, like, like my brain fully came back, obviously. Um, I walk, I talk, <laughs> you know, all the things they said I wouldn't do again. Um, so this is what kind of God we serve. He is a healing God today. He's not a healer of in the apostles day or the, you know, he's, he wasn't just a healer. Then Jesus is a healer today and people need to understand that, that, and I think that's one of the biggest reasons I came back to was because people need to understand that he heals now. But, um, so I went through all this rehab and then I remembered being able to, um, I could write before I could count. So I wrote the folders, <laughs> um, the accordion type folders that God the Father had pulled out. And then I went back after I could count again. So I wrote them first. About a month later, I could count. And I went back and I went one, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven universes. And, um, and then I just thought that was really interesting because I don't know if realms and universes are the same though, but I always thought it was really interesting because I, including earth, the three realms I fell down, um, then there was also hell itself. And then we have, we had outer space, you know, where I flew through with the angels and then heaven. And that was seven. So I don't know if that's what it, if that's what he means by that, or if it could be much bigger, I don't know. But, um, and I also remember asking God, the father, why we have to do this, why we have to do this life. And he knew what I meant by this. Why do we have to do this? And he said, he said, that's easy, Camille. It's to love. <laughs> and I was like, it wasn't some big, um, you just kind of would think it would be some big, huge explanation. <laughs> but not with God the Father. That's another reason I know when he speaks to me. Because it's short. It's to the point. It's matter of fact. It's just how it is. So, he said that. Um, he said a couple other things to me. But I have never been able to remember what they were. Um, yeah, I just remember talking longer than just those couple of things. But, and then all of a sudden, I start shooting down. And I'm back into my body. And it was like a Google Earth. And I remember when I was coming back into my body, the craziest thing was there was like this black soot on everything on Earth. Um, like it dripped off the grass even. It was... Um, because it was like a black and white view I had when I was coming back into my body. And I just saw this black. And I remember calling it a goo. Um, a goo or a soot. And so I've researched that a lot um, too. And there's there's even something to that that's really crazy. But um, yeah, it's just uh, kind of the epitome of evil. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just, I just want everyone to understand that Heaven is more magnificent. Um, oh, something cool too was the father would give announcements all day. He gave them to all the people all day. So you knew the difference between when he was speaking right to you and to the crowd, you know. So he would, I don't remember any of his announcements, but I remember throughout the day he would give them. And then angels, anytime he gave one, they would stand at prayed rest. Um, and I always thought that was so neat. And then whenever he gave them to the community, it felt like rivers. I always described it as rivers of running water because it went from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet. And it was like a like a just a waterfall over you. But it was love, energy, food, um, everything. It uh, joy, peace. Um, it was like a gas almost <laughs> like a, like some kind of fuel for you. And he did it all throughout the day when he would make announcements. Um, and I just always thought it was really cool how he would always say my answers usually, except for when I asked him about, you know, when I said I had sin, I hadn't repented for on earth. He let me fully ask those questions. And I think it was because he knew I was going to be coming back and talking to you <laughs> and to everyone else. So. Yeah, but uh, yeah, he just, uh, there's never enough, uh, there's never enough words in this language to describe his love. And uh, all I want to do is go back there. And my story is hard because it puts me back there a lot, you know, the hell part. Um, but God, the Father has also told me that you cannot say the story without telling the truth of, of the hell. So... Because I've tried to get by with just not speaking about it. And that didn't get me far. He was like, nope, that's not why you did it. Why it happened. You need to tell people because people are believing these days. They're being told by their own pastors sometimes that it's not real. And it's very real. It's more real than real. Like I remember coming back saying that was more real. And I still say it. That was more real than me sitting here. This feels like a dream. Like when people ask me, how do you know you didn't just, because it's so fantastical, you know, a scripture. <laughs> That's how I know it wasn't a dream. There's so much scripture. To date, I have 35 scriptures of where I was. Um, and and that's all for the hell part. I have many for that part, as well as the heaven. Uh, the majority of my time, 
or the majority, excuse me, the majority of the scriptures um, are in heaven. Uh, but but there's just there's a ton for where I was in hell as well um, on my way to it, the outer darkness and different things. And um, but I know it wasn't a dream because you don't feel dreams like that. You don't you don't see everything going on in a dream. I never have. I've never had a dream where I could feel the pain, see them a 360 degree view um, and almost and even feel what they their enjoyment like they're uh, but not in a good way. Like you're not feeling the because they the demons love to torment us. They love to, especially um, in the way I was assaulted. I don't know how much I can say um, that way, but I want it to be on YouTube. So, <laughs> um, but the way I was assaulted was their biggest pleasure, the demons. And I think that's why now we're they're having all of this perversion coming up in society because that's how they are. They're very much that, like most of my torment was that way. It wasn't any other way. So just to be clear, yeah, because I think some people are maybe wondering, uh, they were tormenting you in private areas of your body that yes. I start to discuss here on this, and that's yes. what you experience in hell. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And their joy from it. Mm -hmm. It was that, it reminded me a lot of Genesis um, 6. You know, the fallen angels, how they would um, uh, assault the sheep, even the God, it's, it's all about us being God's creation. So like how they were even doing that to the animals. Um, uh, they fully enjoy that. That is um, because it's the biggest, I think it is the biggest um, punch in the gut, so to speak, to God. The Father and and Jesus and you know the Trinity. I think I think that kind of uh, immorality is that's why the with children you know and all that stuff is so horrific because it is the most horrific thing um, and to hurt people you know to assault people um, in their parts and stuff that is. Uh, that's the most uh, abomination type thing um, you can think of. Yeah. And I think all this um, of the same sexes, all the trans stuff, all that is all coming up because all that's coming to a head of the end. Um, and they're going to be, they're enjoying that fully there and they want more of it. Amen. Well, thank you for sharing that powerful testimony with us. It wasn't easy for Sister Camille to share her hell visit, but the Lord ordered her to do it so that others could know that hell is real and that we need to turn to Jesus. If you haven't done so already, I invite you to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior today. And I invite everyone watching to join a fasting chain I'm organizing. It's a one-year fasting chain. I will fast every day during 2024 so the chain is not broken but you can fast one or two days each week or one or two days each month. We will be praying and fasting for all the prayer requests that people send to this ministry through video comments and emails. So please write your petitions in the comments below. Also, please give this video a like and subscribe to receive more powerful testimonies. I will let Sister Camille end the video with a prayer for all the viewers. Let's pray together. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank you, Lord God, for this time together, Lord. I just ask that you continue to, whoever's watching this and has opened their heart to you, Lord God, that you would just please touch them in a real way and bring them, draw them even closer to you, Lord God. I pray over anyone that's watching this that wants to be saved today, just please repent for your sins and ask Jesus to come into your heart and find a good local church that can help you and, and mentor you through this, this journey, Lord. I know that they will, and I just ask, Lord God, that you bring them mentors into their lives, Lord God, and just, um, I just pray plead the people to repent that are watching right now lord god um i just plead that you will draw them near to you because that's what you do and i thank you jesus i pray over anyone watching right now that needs any healing in their body or spirit that they would now just accept that healing in the name of jesus christ we thank you jesus with our authority in you 
or with your authority um, that we can that uh, you can heal them right now in any area of their lives that they might need touch Lord God I ask that you heal all areas of depression with anybody watching I see a sense of a spirit of depression so I, we just quench that out in the mighty name of Jesus right now Lord and we thank you Jesus for your word that people can draw near to your word and then also get encouragement from that because it is life it is life and i thank you jesus for this time together i thank you for his ministry i ask that you continue to bless it that you would bring people and stories near to him or with his channel lord god out into the world that people would be able to draw near to you and see the reality of heaven and hell and the reality of the evil that we have power and authority over to have victory over. We thank you that we are more than overcomers in Christ Jesus. And we thank you for all your blessings and love. We pray no retaliation from this video is allowed to be accomplished. Nothing is fruitful from the enemy over anyone watching. No fruitful um works of the enemy we just work to expose to just expose them lord and we thank you jesus for all this time and just we ask that you continue to bless this plant this deep within people's souls and minds um and bring it all for your glory to draw them closer to you in jesus mighty name